The following program is furnished by the Truth About Your Future, LLC. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station. This information is education and not financial advice. Consult a financial advisor before investing. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman is brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. And by Global X ETFs, dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. And by Edelman Financial Engines. Rick Edelman is a board member, consultant, shareholder, and client of EFE. But EFE is unaffiliated and has no say over the content of the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. This is where technology, innovation, and personal finance come together. This is the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. And now your host, Rick Edelman. I'm glad you're with me here on the truth about your future. Let me share with you what's coming up on today's show. Are we in a recession? Crypto regulation, the latest on Alzheimer's research. Are you paying your bills on time? Crypto mining is helping the energy grid. The future of college degrees. Electronic skin. And this week's health and wellness segment by my wife, Jean Edelman. Let me share with you what's going on in the economy. The economy contracted almost 1% in the second quarter. That's the second consecutive decline two quarters in a row of economic decline. That's the most common definition of a recession. And that's the big question, isn't it? Are we in a recession? Well, the official arbiter is the National Bureau of Economic Research. And we're not in a recession until they say we're in a recession. Of course, it they're not going to make a determination until long after the fact because they want to take a look at the data and they're not going to get the data for months. So by the time the National Bureau of Economic Research says we're in a recession, the recession will probably be over. So let me just answer it for you because this is the debate you're constantly seeing in the media. It drives me crazy over whether or not we are or are not in a recession. Here's the answer. If your personal financial status is worse than it was, you're in a recession. Maybe you're out of work. You've lost your job. You've lost your income. Maybe your bills have become much higher than they were and you're struggling to pay those bills. Maybe your investment portfolio has fallen dramatically in value. If you are personally experiencing a reversal of your progress, you are in a recession. I don't care what the economists have to say. On the other hand, maybe you just got a new job with a big pay increase. Maybe you've chosen investments that have, in fact, been doing really quite well. Maybe things are doing fine despite the fact you're hearing doom and gloom elsewhere. Well, then you are not in a recession. Look, you know the joke. A recession is when your neighbor loses his job, and a depression is when you lose yours. In the end of the day, all economics is personal. So don't make too much of the fact that everybody's arguing about whether or not we're in a recession. Worry instead, are you doing what you need to be doing to protect yourself and your family from what may yet come? That's the real key. And if you're not sure if you're doing things correct, well, now's the time to talk to a financial advisor. The folks at Edelman Financial Engines, good place to start. Well, part of the reason that the economy has fallen nine-tenths of a percent in the last three months is because inflation rose nine percent in the month of June, the highest level in four decades. We didn't see an increase from June to July. We're going to have to wait and see when we get the final numbers on, uh, on August. Meantime, the Wall Street Journal has created an inflation tracker, 100,000 data points. And here's what they've discovered. The price of dairy products up 14% in the past year. Butter is up 21%. Poultry, 17% increase. Eggs up 33%. Lettuce is up 11 Bananas, 7%. Sugar's up 10%. But not everything is up in price. Smartphones are 20% cheaper. Televisions are cheaper too. Technologies are making things cheaper, but technology hasn't yet been able to figure out how to make food very much cheaper. 
Chicken and flour are each up 20% in the past year. Margarine is up 34%. The only thing quizzical about that is why is anybody eating margarine instead of butter? General Mills is predicting 14% inflation in food prices over the next 12 months. It says its cost for fertilizer has doubled. At Unilever, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Walmart, they're all raising prices. Hershey says it might not be able to meet demand this Halloween. <laughs> Kit Kats, Twizzlers, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Candy sales were up 11% over last year. They were up 15% the year before that. But Hershey now says they can't get enough raw materials. And the eight weeks surrounding Halloween, that provides Hershey with 12% of their annual sales. Twice normal volume. So the fact that they can't get enough candy for Halloween, you might want to start stocking up and do your best to not raid the candy jar. Meanwhile, overall food spending fell 5.5% between January and May. That's the largest four-month drop since 1973. Prices have gone up. Incomes have gone down. People are buying less food. We're also seeing similar uh, reductions in construction projects, down 1.1% in June. Economists had expected an increase, which shows you you can never believe an economist. Meanwhile, monthly car payments are now rivaling mortgages. The Tesla Model Y is $1,500 a month on a 48-month loan. That's the same as a 30-year mortgage for a house that costs three hundred grand. That's assuming 5.7% interest and 15% down payment. I mean, this is unbelievable. Houses and cars costing the same. No wonder 40% of Americans now say they're struggling to pay their bills. That's 91 million households, the highest ever reading. Moody's says that the typical household has to spend $500 a month more to buy the same goods and services they bought last year. And so what are Americans doing in the face of this? You guessed it. They're turning to credit cards. And it's getting harder because we're starting to see layoffs across the country. Ford just announced 4,000 white-collar job cuts. That's 10% of its salaried workers in North America. And more workers today have two full-time jobs than at any time we've been tracking the data since 1994. Half a million Americans have two full-time jobs. Meanwhile, 20 million Americans quit their jobs in the first five months of the year. I don't get it. Some people have two jobs, others have none. The Great Resignation is what it's called. A survey of 15,000 of the people who quit their jobs this year, one out of four regret it. The new job isn't as good as they'd hoped. Having no job means they've lost their social connections. Guess who is least likely to feel they made a mistake by quitting? Healthcare workers. 86% of them are glad they quit. And that is a sad and scary commentary for America's society and our healthcare system. You add it all up. Bottom line is this. U.S. households are going to need $7 trillion more in retirement than they have. So what should you do about it? Get married. I've never been more serious. In 2010, the median net worth of married couples in their 20s and 30s was four times more than single people. Now, it's nine times more. So if you want to improve your finances, marry or, as my mother would say, live together first. And in the face of all of this, of needing to work, getting a job, maybe two jobs, pooling resources by cohabitating, what are financial advisors doing personally about this? Well, a new survey by Ameriprise found that 30% of the financial advisors they asked say they are accelerating their plans to retire. Meaning, at the very moment you need a financial advisor, you're going to find it harder to find one. I'm Rick Edelman. Looks like I've got job security here on The Truth About Your Future. Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? 
there's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, symbol BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. Allow us to introduce you to Jeremiah, an ordinary person who helped shape the future by putting his money behind the right ideas. Jeremiah's always been a numbers guy, from his days competing in the high school math league to now as the teacher who leads it. Jeremiah is also accessing the companies who are driving environmental innovations for the next generation by investing in Invesco QQQ. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100, which goes to show you don't have to be a helio seismologist to help push progress forward. Become an agent of innovation. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Visit Invesco.com for a prospectus with this information. Read it carefully before investing. This is a call to the self-starters, to the self-made, and the self-sufficient. It's time to declare a new kind of independence, because Edelman Financial Engines is here to provide tailored investment solutions for your kind of wealthy. You should expect more from your wealth advisors. Our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize winning research, and our planners don't sell products to earn commissions. And because we're here for those who question the answers, we model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. So no matter where you're going next, see what we can build for you. Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash TAYF to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines built for those who built themselves. Welcome back to The Truth About Your Future. Do you like salt? Who doesn't? Well, people who sprinkle salt on their food, is that you? If you sprinkle salt on your food, According to a study from the United Kingdom, you're going to die sooner than people who don't sprinkle salt on their food. The UK study followed 500,000 people for nine years and discovered that if you always add salt to your food, you cut your life expectancy by two years if you're a male, 18 months if you're female. So stop with the salt. You'll live longer and have more truth about your future. This is the truth about your future, and in your future is a fall. Yeah, sad to say, but falls are very common as we age. We suffer vision loss, uh, a loss of muscle strength, and so these combined, uh, well, we just fall down, fall down the stairs, trip over the rug. There's an easy way to prevent falls, and it's important that we do this for ourselves. And if you aren't at risk of falling, well, think about your parents or grandparents. Number one, make sure there's good lighting in the room, activated by motion sensors so that you can see where you're walking. Eliminate area rugs because the transition from wood floor or tile floor to an area rug, well, that creates something you can trip over, leading to a fall. Add handrails. Put them in bathrooms. Uh, put them in any room where you might need to steady yourself. Wear non-skid footwear so that you're less likely to slip. 
Have an emergency alert system, a necklace, a bracelet, or a clip, so that if you do fall, you can immediately, quickly, easily call for help. And paint your stairs, the top and bottom steps, a different color than the rest of the floor and the rest of the stairs to help remind you you're reaching a point of different elevation. These kinds of steps can go very far to helping you step fairly and safely and avoid falling. I'm Rick Edelman. This is The Truth About Your Future. This is The Truth About Your Future, and one thing that might be in your future, life in a nursing home. It's something increasingly common. Six out of ten Americans will spend at some point life in a nursing home. Let's say that you're living in a nursing home and you don't pay your bill. Maybe you die without paying everything that you owe. What's the nursing home going to do about this? What do they do if you haven't paid your bill? They're going to throw you out? Well, frankly, the first thing they may do is sue. They're going to sue you, but that's not all. They're also going to sue your family and even your friends. One in seven adults who have had health care debt say they've been threatened with a lawsuit or arrest by their nursing homes. Nursing homes routinely accuse friends and relatives of what? Of helping you hide assets. Their attitude is you're trying to avoid paying the bill so you can preserve your money for your survivors, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren. And so by giving your money to your friends and family makes it look like you don't have any money to pay the bill. Nursing homes, fearful of that tactic, are now suing friends and family, not just the residents themselves. It's an increasing and increasingly disturbing trend. I want to ask you, what do these universities have in common? The National University of Singapore, the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, Berkeley, the University of Zurich, MIT, University of Oxford, Cornell, the University of Hong Kong, University of Sydney. What do they all have in common? All of them offer degrees in blockchain engineering. The fact that you can now get a college degree demonstrates how big this is going to get. You know, I remember when I first became a financial planner, that was really financial planner? What is that? The only people who called themselves financial planners were the people who were trying to invent the profession. I was one of the first gen, the, the initial generation of advisors who engaged in this newfound field of financial planning. Today, you can get a college degree in financial planning. You sure couldn't do it when I began as a financial advisor. And look at how huge the financial planning profession has become. This is the exact same thing I believe that we are seeing in the world of crypto. Now, for the first time, even though crypto is 13 years old, we can now get college degrees in blockchain engineering. This demonstrates how pervasive, commonplace, mainstreaming this innovation is and how much bigger it's going to become. About half of the world's crypto mining is occurring here in the United States. And the number one state for crypto miners, these are the people who create digital assets, the number one state is Texas. When a heat wave hit this summer, the Texas electricity regulators asked the crypto miners to stop their operations. And all of them voluntarily complied. As a result, a thousand megawatts of power went back into the electric grid for 10 hour periods at a time, multiple times during the week. These miners served the public, making sure electricity went to people who really needed it because the mining operation, let's face it, we can turn it off at any given moment as needed, but they actually made money by being so helpful. They sold the power back to the grid. So digital miners make money from mining and make money from not mining as well. Pretty good combination. I'm Rick Edelman. Here are some of the most fascinating new innovations coming our way. 200 million people take Lipitor or other statins every day to lower their LDL. That's bad cholesterol. Now a biotech company is developing an injection, just one shot, that would permanently reduce your LDL. No more daily pills. They're doing this using CRISPR gene editing technology. They would replace a single letter of DNA for another 
to regulate your LDL levels. The shot in tests cut cholesterol in monkeys by 60%, and human tests are now underway. Researchers are developing e-skin, electronic skin. It recreates the functions of the human epidermis. In prosthetics, it would give people who wear artificial limbs a sense of touch. In robotics, it would make robots look and feel like humans. Pretty soon, we'll not only have robots everywhere, you're not going to be able to distinguish them from real people. Scientists have revived organs from deceased pigs. Yeah, this could help with organ transplants, but it blurs the line between life and death. See, if your heart stops beating, you're legally dead, but your organs can be recovered an hour later. They still work. So are you dead? Or is it that your heart is dead? It's showing how medical ethicists are wrestling with the challenges brought about by technological innovation. You know how challenging it's been to manage your investments successfully this year. You've heard Rick Edelman caution you just about every week that, given today's combination of high market volatility and stubbornly high inflation, the investments that worked in the past might not be the ones to help you achieve your goals today. This is especially true if you need to generate current income from your investments. But where can you turn if your traditional approach isn't working anymore? At Global X ETFs, we can help. Our ETFs offer you investments that you might not have considered before. Asset classes with income-producing potential, including MLPs from the energy sector, real estate investment trusts, preferreds, and dividend-paying stocks. We've been providing our investors with income-oriented investments for more than a decade. Explore our full lineup of ETFs and get our research and insights and more all at GlobalXETFs.com. Or ask your financial advisor about GlobalX ETFs. GlobalXETFs.com. Meet Schwab Intelligent Income, a simple, modern way to pay yourself from your portfolio. Overcome the complexity of income needs in retirement with automated tax smart withdrawals that you can start, stop, or adjust at any time without penalty, plus ongoing monitoring so you'll always know where you stand. And since lower fees means more money for you to invest, you pay no advisory fee. Available with Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Visit schwab.com slash intelligent income, a modern approach to wealth management. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman, sponsored by Choice. Choice is changing the way Americans save for retirement by making it possible to invest in Bitcoin, crypto, and other alternative assets inside your IRA. That's right. Whether you open a deductible or a Roth IRA with Choice, you can invest in Bitcoin and 22 other digital assets in your retirement account. You can also buy stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, gold, real estate, and more, all in a single retirement account. There's no hidden fees or account minimums, just more control over your retirement savings. And Choice makes it ridiculously easy to combine all of your old retirement accounts with a rollover concierge service. So if you've switched jobs in the last few years and have been putting off rolling over your old 401k, make sure you check out Choice. Head on over to retirewithchoice.com slash Rick. That's retirewithchoice.com slash Rick. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future. Welcome back to the program. I'm Rick Edelman. I'm very happy to be joined by Matt Hogan, who's the CIO of Bitwise Asset Management, frequent friend and visitor here to the program. Matt, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me, Rick. Yeah, you know, we're getting a lot of questions um, about crypto as often as ever, frankly, more than ever, which I'm personally finding fascinating. Even though crypto, the price of Bitcoin, the price of Ethereum, other digital assets has fallen dramatically since last November, risen dramatically since June, despite the volatility or maybe because of it, we're getting more and more questions than ever. But the big theme that I'm hearing about, which is what I want to ask you about today, Matt, is about regulation. People are wondering, is the government going to ban Bitcoin? Is the government going, uh, do they feel threatened by this? Is this something they're trying to stop? Or is this something they're, they're trying to support? Give us your take. 
That's a great question. You know, I think the reason people are asking this question, Rick, is that they see crypto as about to go mainstream. They see DeFi and NFTs and stable coins and payment use cases about to go mainstream. And they know that in for order that to happen, we need to have progress on crypto regulation. And right now, we don't have clarity on crypto regulation. The short answer to your question is no, they're not going to ban it. They're going to bring it into the regulatory framework and find ways to tax it. And that will open up new applications and new uses. It's like any disruptive technology, Rick. You and I lived through the early days of the internet. At first, there weren't clear regulations on the internet. Remember when you weren't paying state sales tax when you bought something from Amazon? Mm -hmm. I do. But eventually that regulatory clarity develops around these disruptive technologies. And that actually helps lead to the mainstream use. And the same thing is playing out over crypto. Of course, it's ugly. Of course, there are big headlines. Of course, there's confusion. But at the end of the road, I think there's a very good thing waiting. Yeah, I think the, the, the analogy that I like to use best is about the automotive industry. You know, first we had the Model T come off the assembly line. And with all those suddenly these new cars on the road, the first thing we had were car accidents. We didn't have any rules of the road. So you know, which side of the road do I drive on? Who gets to go first at an intersection? What are the speed limits? And so it's only after the innovation does the regulation then follow. And that's kind of where we're at. We're in a Model T world in the world of uh, crypto these days. I, I love that analogy. I think that's exactly right. And that's the way regulation should work. Look, if you tried to do regulation before you saw what the innovation was, uh, you would do it very imperfectly. You would slow down innovation. So now is the right time. It's totally normal. And it is one of the biggest stories in crypto. Again, I think at the end of the tunnel is a very good place indeed. But driving through the tunnel, there will be periods where it, it's dark and uncertain. And I find that uh, some folks don't like this change because they're threatened by it. I notice that one big group that is opposing the idea of a central bank digital currency, for example, the notion of the federal government creating a digital dollar, one group that's opposed to this idea is the American Bankers Association. And my reaction is, well, gee, I wonder why they're opposed. They see it as a threat and they don't want the turf disturbed. That's exactly right. Look, crypto and blockchain is going to disrupt finance and money the same way the Amazon, that, that Amazon disrupted Sears, the same way that Netflix disrupted cable. It's the same story playing out. So, of course, that old school industry is going to fight against it, going to say there are massive risks. They're protecting their turf. That's exactly right. But at the end of the day, more efficient faster, more innovative technologies usually win. And I think that's what's going to happen here. So one of the fundamental questions that everybody is seeking to get an answer to is whether or not digital assets are securities under the law. Because if you issue a security, if you sell a security to someone, you have to follow certain rules that people don't have to follow if they're not selling securities. And the best example I can give you are the difference between somebody trying to sell you a stock and somebody trying to sell you a baseball card. Try to sell someone a stock, lots of rules, lots of disclosure requirements, lots of licensing, but anybody can sell anybody a baseball card. So are digital assets securities or not? Well, that's a question that's being wrestled with between the SEC and the CFTC. My personal view is we need entirely new rules, new lawmaking around digital assets. We shouldn't be surprised that something that was created 13 years ago doesn't fit into a regulatory framework that was built in the 1930s and 1940s. The securities law is governed by the 1940 Act. It's right there in the name. We shouldn't be surprised that the sort of uh, round peg of crypto doesn't fit perfectly in the square hole. What we do need is adequate investor protections. What we do need is adequate disclosures, but we don't need all of the restrictions because they're not simply securities in the same way a security is. There's no insider team. There's no centralized development. Uh, we need new rulemaking. That's what I, I'd like to see in the space. 
So when people say that we need more regulation, and I agree thoroughly with you that we do, uh, the more regulation, the more clarity, the more rules of the road, the more easily we can operate safely. Kind of like, I don't care what the speed limit is, just tell me so that I don't get a ticket. Uh, and we'll see more of this uh, regulation coming over the next couple of years. Lots of bills in Congress right now, lots of work being done by the Treasury Department, the IRS, FINRA, the Fed, the CFTC, the SEC, everybody's all over this, and we're going to see the rules of the road coming. But at the moment, it's not that we have a total absence of rules. For example, we know what the tax rules are. You tax your profits and losses in digital assets pretty much the same way you get taxed with stocks and bonds. We understand that pretty clear. But there are tax elements that we don't have clarity on. For example, staking, mining, airdrops, and forks. Those are all four fancy terms that never existed prior to crypto, and the IRS never contemplated them. So there isn't clarity on those elements of the world of digital assets, and that's an example of how we have some rules in place that cover most issues, but there are still additional rules to come that we're waiting on. In the middle of this, as the investors, Matt, are trying to sit back and wait for the regulators to catch up, what should investors do? Does this mean you don't invest today, you wait for all of the rules, or do you proceed? And if so, how? What's your view on that? Well, I think everyone has to make their own choice, Rick. But of course, the downside of waiting till there's absolute clarity and absolute product market fit is you're going to miss the bulk of the returns. I think you lay this out very well when you talk about a Bitcoin ETF. Will there be a Bitcoin ETF? Ultimately, yes. Will it bring more investors in the market? Absolutely. Do we know when it's going to happen? No, but do you want to invest before it happens or after it happens? The same thing is true on regulation. Look, we're going to get to regulatory clarity. It's not going to destroy the crypto market. It's not going to be a lawless libertarian paradise either. It's going to be somewhere in the happy middle and that's going to unlock mainstream use cases. I think taking that regulatory risk as an investor is part of what you, what you need in order to get strong asymmetric upside returns. You want to take on that risk, but you do need to recognize that it's a risk. But if you wait until it's all clear sailing, you know, these, these strong returns that we've seen historically in crypto will be behind us. I remember years ago when computers were still pretty new, I mean, desktop computers, and what used to drive all of us crazy is that if you waited six months, the new computer was going to be better and cheaper. And so the question was, should I buy the computer today or wait six months? And what we finally concluded is that if you wait six months, you'll always wait six months because it's always going to get better and cheaper. So you can either spend your whole life waiting to buy a computer or you can just bite the bullet, buy it, take full advantage of what it can do for you right now. And I kind of think that's maybe where we're at with digital assets. Is it ideal? No. Is it working flawlessly in the investment world? Not yet. But given the alternative of missing out on the investment opportunity, well, maybe it's time to just grin and bear it. I think that's a great analogy, Rick. I couldn't agree more. So you're on the road an awful lot. Uh, you did manage, uh, you had told me to take a little time off this summer, but your conference schedule is packed through the fall. You're speaking all the time to advisors. What are they telling you about their attitude about crypto regulation? Yeah, I think they're in this bucket. They understand that it's coming. They would like to see more clarity, but they know that they may need to invest ahead of that. Uh, they have questions. They want to know, will the government ban crypto? Will it slow down DeFi? Uh, when will the SEC approve an ETF? And we try to give them answers, but mostly they're focused on the long term. Look, the, I think advisors are now realizing crypto has been here for more than 10 years. It's had a series of large booms and pullbacks. We've just gone through one of those pullbacks and people are positioning themselves in the hope that we'll see another positive cycle on the other side of that. The questions I get around regulation are, you know, will more regulatory clarity help unlock that next positive cycle or will it slow it down? And what I tell advisors is we need regulatory clarity to get to the next bull market. So every time you see progress on the regulatory front, you should think of that as a good thing. Um, I think we're going to get there. I think advisors realize that. 
So it's interesting to hear you say that you acknowledge the need for more regulation and that you're supportive of it. And I know that you spend a lot of time with regulators uh, in Washington, D.C., helping to develop those rules and helping guide them and provide education uh, for them, because this is new for pretty much everybody. But I think that isn't something that most people expect. I think the general assumption is business hates regulation because regulation only gets in the way of doing business and making money. Uh, but that's not really the case in the crypto community, is it? No, it's really not. Look, financial services are regulated on a global basis. Crypto will need to exist within that framework. The bulk of the crypto community, not the edges, Rick, of course, they're extremes, but the bulk of the crypto community where I find myself is focused on how do we take this revolutionary technology and make it mainstream? How do we take this technology and help make finance more efficient, more creative, more inclusive, more innovative? And we recognize that in order to do that, we need regulatory rules of the road. We know this because we talk to the largest banks in the world, to the leading VCs in the world, to financial advisors, and the lack of clarity is preventing them or slowing them from entering the market. So we want that regulatory clarity. Of course, there's a point in the future, Rick, where there can be too much regulation and regulators could overreach. And you certainly see the crypto industry raise its hands when we see bad regulatory language emerge. But net net on balance, more regulatory clarity is what the market needs right now. And it's going to be the key to the next bull, big bull market unlocking. I'm anticipating that over the next 18, 24 months, we're going to be a much more advanced state regarding regulation. And that's going to, as you said, unlock new investment activity as people recognize, hey, I know the speed limit. I'm happy to go on the highway. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, that's Matt Hogan, the Chief Investment Officer of Bitwise Asset Management. If you would like to learn about the investment opportunities in crypto that Bitwise offers, I invite you to go to bitwiseinvestments.com. Matt Hogan, thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me, Rick. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future. What do all the greatest innovations have in common? Agents of innovation. Ordinary people who shape the future by putting their money behind the right ideas. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100. So you don't have to be an inventor to help create what's next to come. Be an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, carefully read and consider fund investment objectives, risks, charges, expenses, and more in the prospectus at Invesco.com. Invesco Distributors, Inc. This is a call to the self-starters, to the self-made, and the self-sufficient. It's time to declare a new kind of independence, because Edelman Financial Engines is here to provide tailored investment solutions for your kind of wealthy. You should expect more from your wealth advisors. Our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize winning research, and our planners don't sell products to earn commissions. And because we're here for those who question the answers, we model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. So no matter where you're going next, see what we can build for you. Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash T-A-Y-F to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines, built for those who built themselves. You know how challenging it's been to manage your investments successfully this year. You've heard Rick Edelman caution you just about every week that, given today's combination of high market volatility and stubbornly high inflation, the investments that worked in the past might not be the ones to help you achieve your goals today. This is especially true if you need to generate current income from your investments. But where can you turn if your traditional approach isn't working anymore? At GlobalX ETFs, we can help. 
Our ETFs offer you investments that you might not have considered before. Asset classes with income-producing potential, including MLPs from the energy sector, real estate investment trusts, preferreds, and dividend-paying stocks. We've been providing our investors with income-oriented investments for more than a decade. Explore our full lineup of ETFs and get our research and insights and more all at GlobalXETFs.com. Or ask your financial advisor about GlobalX ETFs. GlobalXETFs.com. Hey, let me ask you this. Have you forgotten to pay your bills? Two simple words in the English language. I forgot. <laughs> How many times do we let ourselves get into terrible situations because we don't say, I forgot? Let's say you're on trial for armed robbery. <laughs> you say to the judge, I forgot armed robbery was illegal. Well, that was Steve Martin, of course, in his very famous bit of just forgetting to pay taxes. Well, you know what else people are forgetting to do these days? They're forgetting to pay their bills. J.P. Morgan Chase says 1% of its credit card customers are now 30 days delinquent. Pacific Gas and Electric says 1.4 million of its customers are past due. That compares to 900,000 prior to the pandemic. AT&T says more of its customers are falling behind on their bills, too. According to surveys of consumers, they say they're just overwhelmed and they're forgetting to pay their bills. Maybe Steve Martin was onto something. And since people are forgetting to pay bills, maybe they need help in doing so, not remembering, mind you, but in actual paying. So along comes more stimulus. Do you really think we're going to see a fourth stimulus package from the federal government? Well, maybe via a student loan forgiveness package, although that's not actually money in your pocket. It's merely a bill you don't have to though pay at the end of the month. But you weren't paying it anyway for the past two years because there was a moratorium on student loan repayments. But other than that, no, don't expect the federal government to offer another stimulus package. But you might be able to expect one from your state government. California is going to give as much as $1,000 to 23 million residents of California. Oregon's giving $600 to every household to more than about a quarter of a million of them. Colorado is giving $750 to every taxpayer. In Virginia, a big tax cut is coming to taxpayers there as well. These governors and state legislatures are all saying, we're flush with cash. Let's give it back to folks and put money in their pockets. The question becomes, are consumers going to get addicted to these government bailouts, federal or state? Is it keeping people out of the workforce knowing, hey, all I got to do is sit back and wait for the check to show up? And what happens when those governments discover they gave to the taxpayers more than they really could afford to give? Is this just accelerating future tax increases? We'll have to wait and see. Because who knows what the truth is going to hold. I'm Rick Edelman. This is The Truth About Your Future. One of the big themes on this program is Alzheimer's disease. We talk about it often because it is the nation's and, frankly, the world's number one health care crisis. Yeah, the focus has been on the pandemic and deservedly so for the past several years. But bottom line is this. Alzheimer's has the biggest potential for economic havoc. Forget about the humanitarian element of this. We know how devastating that is. I'm talking because this is a personal finance show, about the economic impact of this. Alzheimer's is devastating to global economies for the simple reason that the longer we live, the more likely we're going to develop symptoms of Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. At age 60, the odds are 1 in 10 that you're going to get Alzheimer's. By age 80, it's 1 in 3. By age 90, it's 1 in 2. And as people are living longer than ever the odds are increasingly likely that you or your spouse will develop the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. It's the most expensive disease to treat because patients require 24-7 care, and they live on average 12 years from onset of symptoms until death. 
add it all up, and we are talking about an expensive disease. Already 5 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease, and as the population is being projected to uh, growing rapidly over the next several decades with aging, we're going to have more people than ever in their 80s, 90s, and 100s, which means more people than ever with Alzheimer's. I am involved in a wide variety of organizations in the fight against Alzheimer's. Gene and I have been doing this for several decades. I'm now a member of the Davos Alzheimer's Collective, which is an, a group of hundreds of experts from around the world, mostly medical scientists, who are engaged very intently on this fight. At a recent meeting, I learned something that I uh, was not aware of in the area of Alzheimer's. 90% of people with Down syndrome develop Alzheimer's disease, usually in their early 50s, sometimes even in their 40s. See, historically, people with Down syndrome used to die too young to develop Alzheimer's, but as we've improved the uh, scenarios, medically speaking, the treatment and diagnostics and the support environment for people with, with Down syndrome, they're more likely to live into their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, and they're more likely, therefore, to develop Alzheimer's. This is yet another burden for the families and caregivers of these folks. And it is the caregivers that we do have to pay attention to. 74% of caregivers are over the age of 75, and they are caring for someone over the age of 75. At the moment, we haven't had much success over the past couple of decades in the development of new treatment or cures or vaccines. We are all familiar with Biogen's drug, which was very controversial when it was brought onto the market a year ago. Well, Biogen has now pulled that drug from the market and fired its CEO. This is after Medicare and the Veterans Administration both said they would not pay for it nor would most private insurers. This leaves us without the only drug in 20 years that had been FDA approved. And that's not the only controversial case that we've had. Cassava Sciences said it had a new treatment for Alzheimer's disease, and on the news, its stock jumped 1,500%. But now medical journals are retracting their articles on the drug, saying that the company's studies were flawed, its methods opaque, and its results improbable. Some scientists are even accusing the company of manipulating the test results. Nine experts said they don't trust the company's methods or the results, and the SEC is now investigating with allegations of stock fraud. So, by the way, is the NIH. Meanwhile, investors still continue to fund Alzheimer's research. A biotech company called Alzion has raised $50 million for clinical trials of an oral medication for Alzheimer's disease. There are 300 patients in the study this year. We'll know the results in two years, and our fingers are crossed. So the fight continues, and I will keep you posted on the latest here on The Truth About Your Future. Time now for everybody's favorite segment of the program, a visit by my wife, Jean Edelman. Jean, a student of the healing arts, Reiki, traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy, acupuncture, and of course, macrobiotic and plant-based cooking. Here's Jean. Great to be with you this week. I hope you're doing well. This week, I want to talk about visualizing, visualization. When Rick and I were newly married, we were so good, and we still are really great at visualizing and setting intentions for what we want. We would go visit model homes when we were younger, and we'd carry around the little matchbox of the cars we wanted to drive. 
It was fun. It kept us focused. It kept us looking forward. We visualized our success. We visualized our goals. And we took all the little baby steps to get there. We're still doing it because life is constantly changing and we always want to move on and improve and, and find new joys. And so visualizing is so important. Setting intentions, very, very powerful. When we see something and set a goal for ourselves, we're setting that path. And you know what? Sometimes that path can be very, very rocky or very, very twisty and turny, but it's still our path and we're learning and we're growing. And that's the goal. The gift of life is that these intentions and these visualizations can help us change. The goal is not to let the wonder leave our lives as we go into the later decades. As adults, we need to work a little bit harder to continue to have those visualizations, to continue to have those visualizations and those intentions, because that's what's going to keep us moving forward. And so the action item of this week, make a list of our intentions, make a list of where we see ourselves, maybe next week, next month, next year, five years, that can help us set a path. And so visualizing, making those small steps before we know it, we'll be there. And so the word of the week is very simple. To see. The S is for the soul. Each of us are beautiful, beautiful souls here with a purpose. And it could take a whole lifetime <laughs> to figure that out. But that's the fun. That's the journey. That's the learning. So let's see each other as these beautiful souls as we tumble and turn and make our twists and over our rocks as we get to where we want to be. E is for empower, to allow ourselves the space and the grace to make these changes in our life. We can't stay locked down. It's very, it's very hard and it doesn't feel good. So we need to empower ourselves to make these changes. The other E is for en enable, to, en to activate and make things possible. We can make any changes we choose when we want them. And so visualize, have some new goals, see ourselves differently, take the baby steps to get there. Have a great week, everyone. I know you can't get enough of Gene. Well, you can go to the truthayf.com for more of Gene's words of the week. Did you know Schwab offers a satisfaction guarantee? If for any reason you're not completely satisfied, Schwab will refund your fee or commission and work with you to make things right. You won't find that kind of promise everywhere, but you will find it at Schwab. It's just another way that they put clients' interest at the heart of everything they do. Learn what's included and how it works at schwab.com slash satisfaction. That's schwab.com slash satisfaction. Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? There's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, symbol BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. Well, that's all the time we've got on The Truth About Your Future this weekend. Remember, sign up for my new master classes. It's online, financial planning in the age of longevity. In my new master class, you'll discover the truth about your future, starting with the fact that if you're alive in 2030, 
you'll probably be alive to age 100 and beyond. Will your money last as long as you do? That's what my new master class teaches you at thetruthayf.com. That's thetruthayf.com. See you next week. Bye-bye. 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 I'm sorry, what? What part didn't you understand? The bu or the bye? Bye-bye. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman has been brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. As crypto grows, Bitwise believes everyone should have a simple and familiar way to access it. Bitwise makes crypto clear. Bitwiseinvestments.com. And by Global X ETFs. For more than a decade, Global X ETFs has been dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. Learn more at GlobalXETFs.com. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. Invesco.com slash QQQ. Stay tuned for Everyday Wealth with Soledad O'Brien and Gene Chatsky from Edelman Financial Engines. EverydayWealth.com backslash radio. EFE and the truth about your future with Rick Edelman are unaffiliated entities. Get the truth about your future every weekend with Rick Edelman. It's the truth AYF.com.